Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. The title of today's video is How to Respond to Intrusive Suicidal Thoughts. And before we start, of course, we have to tell our normal puns. Uh, these, again, coming from the last video, more puns about food. And here's the first one. I went to a restaurant that serves breakfast at any time. That's what the sign said. So I ordered French toast during the Renaissance. <laughs> it took me a while to get that. Here's the other one. There's a new restaurant that just opened in town, and I always love to try new restaurants. It's called the Karma Cafe. When you order, you get what you deserve, followed by just desserts. <laughs> As I mentioned, the title of today's video is How to Respond to Intrusive Suicidal Thoughts. Those of you who have been following this channel for a while uh, probably have observed that I haven't made a video on suicide prevention in quite some time. But I'm writing a book on the subject now, a book I know is going to help many, many people, and so I have new information to share. The problem in the past has been, whenever I make such a video, uh, that YouTube has demonetized it, which means I can't make any money from the video because they deem it unsuitable for advertisers. Now, why is this? I think it's because of the shame and the stigma that still surrounds suicide. For example, what if this video were about a new... Uh, kind of heart surgery or a new cancer treatment that was saving lives, I'm sure the advertisers would be very happy to be associated with this kind of content. But if I make a video about saving lives because I'm helping people who are desperate and have no hope, I give them an alternative to taking their own life and f help them find a better way, somehow this is considered not advertiser friendly. It doesn't really make sense. So I want to say to whomever is monitoring this video, that the reason I do videos on suicide is not to tell people to die by suicide, but to prevent them from doing so. And based on all the, the uh, comments and the emails I've received, I know that my mission is succeeding. Now, lest I feel ungrateful or seem ungrateful, uh, I'm actually very grateful to you two because they have provided me and many other people with this platform to speak to people all over the world who are desperate, who are lacking hope and need something to hold on to. Uh, we've been doing this, I've been doing this for seven years, and I know it's helping a lot of people. So thank you for having this platform that I and others have been using to communicate hope and healing to other people. And um, I do appreciate that. So now let's return to the subject of the video about intrusive suicidal thoughts. So what is an intrusive thought? Well, let's hear it from Wikipedia. An intrusive thought is an unwelcome, involuntary thought, image, or upsetting idea that may become an obsession and can feel difficult to manage or eliminate. If you have been suicidal or are suicidal, you might be having some of these thoughts and they might be really negative. They might be saying things like, you're a loser or you deserve to die or you're not going to get better so you might as well die now. Now the problem with these intrusive thoughts is when you repeat them or when you hear them over and over again, they make grooves in the brain like grooves in a vinyl record. And so they become very, very difficult to manage and to eliminate. But here is some good news. While you cannot maybe stop intrusive thoughts from coming in, they're like automatic, you can learn how to manage them. You can learn how to respond to them. And that's where your freedom is. Remember Viktor Frankl, man's search meaning? What? Man's freedom, woman's freedom is the ability to choose how you respond in any situation. So what happens when these thoughts come in telling you to die or you're worthless? You can do a number of things. The first thing I like is a technique they use in mindfulness meditation where you're just observing the thoughts. You're not grabbing onto them. Uh, you're not pushing them away. You're not resisting them. Uh, but you just observe them. And the images I like to use, uh, think about you're looking up to the sky, lying in the grass. It's a beautiful day and the clouds are just passing by. The thoughts are just coming, passing, and going. Or you can imagine leaves going down a river floating down a river, or train cars going by, whatever it is, just imagine these things coming into your awareness and then leaving, coming in and leaving, because thoughts are like that. They arise, they abide, and they go away. They're just thoughts. A second technique you can use when these negative thoughts come your way and tell you to do bad things is to tell yourself, you know what? It's just a thought, and how do I know it's even true? 
right? Because when a person gets really severely depressed, chemical changes inside their brain distort the reality. It's like you put on glasses that were not the right type of glasses and your visual field is distorted. That's how it is when you're really depressed. So if the voice is telling you there is no hope, well, how do you really know that? That's just your brain giving you misinformation. This is why it's so important to have other people around to give you a reality check to say, yes, Douglas, you may think there's no hope, but there really is. Things can get better. I don't care what your voice is saying. Don't pay attention to it. It's a false voice, etc. So again, uh, when you're depressed, when you're down, when you're feeling despairing, you cannot trust what your brain is telling you. The third technique I use when a negative thought comes my way, especially a thought that's telling me to do self-harm, and I had a lot of those thoughts many years ago, I use a technique I learned in Silva Mind Control. You simply say, cancel, cancel. That interrupts the pattern for some reason. It does it, cancel, cancel, and then you immediately replace the negative thought with something positive, such as if the thought says, you're doomed, you're doomed, you're doomed, you say, I can get better, I can survive this, I will survive this. And this is based on the idea that two thoughts cannot occupy the same space at the same time, just right? Just like objects in space can't do that, well, a thought is a thing. So you can't hold, you know, uh, there's no hope and I'll get better at the same exact moment. So cancel, cancel, it stops the thought in its tracks and you substitute something else, such as I can get you better, I can survive this, and I will be restored. And finally, you can respond to intrusive suicidal thoughts using what I call positive distraction. Probably haven't heard that before, right? So when we think of distraction, we think of it negatively, like Jill got a ticket for distracted driving. Sounds like that's what happened to me. Or Johnny has ADD. He's so distracted he can't learn anything. But in this situation, distraction is good. What positive distraction means is turning your mind away from the negative thought, away from the harmful thought like this, and then focusing it in the environment, some, something outside of yourself in the environment. For example, you could call a friend, you could go for a walk, you could put on some music, you could do some jumping jacks, or you could eat some chocolate cake, or at least some Yasso frozen Greek yogurt bars. By the way, it's Yasso, you did a great job. I love your frozen Greek yogurt bars, especially the fudge variety. Anyway, <laughs> the idea is just put your mind someplace else, whatever it is, and there you are in a different reality. And that's what you need in that moment to basically uh, get back on track. So here's one of my favorite examples of positive distraction taken from my own life. So many, many decades ago, I was 32, another depressive breakdown, lived in Oregon. I had to go back and live with my parents in Florida. Ultimate humiliation, especially back then, right? So here I was in Florida with a bunch of old people, you know, retired. What was I going to do? Well, I made friends with this guy my age who, went, who ran the uh, tennis pro shop. And he and I loved to play tennis. And I told him about my depression, how I was going into these really dark places. Well, anytime he saw me doing that, he said, Doug, be at the tennis court in five minutes. And so I showed up. And for the next two hours, all I could think about was returning his wicked serve. My desire to win that set, my con competitive spirit that was still alive distracted me from all thoughts of self-harm and suicide. I hope these tips have been helpful. Remember, you can observe your suicidal thoughts without feeling the need to act on them. And just because you have a thought, it doesn't mean it's true. What you're looking for is a way to escape and end your horrible pain. Well, there are many other ways to do this besides ending your life. Many other ways, all of which work. So you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by acting on them. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.